demonstrate a couple things for you. One is going to be the use of the auto siphon, which, is, which makes uh, racking extremely easy. And then the other thing we're going to do is actually rack some wine that's been sitting on oak for the last uh, three or four weeks and then show you how that's done. So to start off with, you know, your equipment is clean, but what you want to do is you want to sanitize it. So the best way to do that is you have your metabisulfite, sulfite, your solution already made up. And what I'll do is I'll put the auto siphon into the metabisulfite. I'll go ahead and pull it up and then push it down. And so that starts my siphon. And you can see how you know, it's already flowing down into the carboy. Basically, once you get you know, some good sulfite in there, you can go ahead and shut off the flow. And pour all the residual back in. And set this aside. And then the next step is going to be to sanitize the, the fermenter that the you know the rack that you're going to be racking into. It's best to go ahead and keep a solution of the potassium metabisulfite, not sodium, but potassium metabisulfite, so that you can sanitize the inside of your fermenters, the tools that you'll be using, and also as a handy solution when you need to top up your, your airlocks. So, having done that, and everything is sanitized, but I'll go ahead and I'll put the, the one hose on the auto siphon into the receiving end. This will go here, and then you can see how you just give it a couple of pumps, and you have flow. I have the, the hose pretty much so it's not splashing. And that's one of the important things is to be mindful that um, you know, your wine does <laughs> have alcohol in it and that you have to protect it from the oxygen. Now, one of the neat things about winemaking is that you have potassium metabisulfite, which actually has antioxidants in it. Yeah. And the reason that's important is that if you do get a little bit of oxygen <coughs> in, the, uh, you know, in the wine, that the metabisulfite will basically clean things up. And, and basically cause that to just fall out of suspension and not to uh, oxidize your wine. One of the important things that, um, that I do that I find very helpful is to take a, a tag and then put that on the, uh, on the carboy. So that way I know what kind of wine it is and then every step of the way. So I'm going to write on this, it was racked again. And then today's date. Now one of the things to remember is that when you are making wine from fresh fruit, that you'll need to do this, you know, after it gets done with its primary ferment, is that you'll need to do this maybe every three to four weeks. And then every time that you do that, you want to add more sulfite to it, because what happens is every time you rack it, or else it, you know, it gets done fermenting, it'll actually blow off that, uh, that sulfite. So you need to, you know, base is to maintain that level. And technically it's somewhere between 50 to 70 parts per million. The reason you want to do that is it's high enough where it'll, it'll you know, keep all the bacteria and wild yeast and all the rest of that at bay, but it's also low enough that you don't taste it. Looks like we're getting pretty close to the end, and um, I'll move this down like this. And what I do is I'll make, uh, go ahead and I'll lift the, um, the hose out so that the, um, basically it gets it off the bottom and um, gives me a little bit better idea of where we're we're at as far as the, uh, the siphoning process. And then as it continues to um, get closer and closer to the bottom, I'll lower the, um, the auto siphon. I can tilt you know, the fermenter just a little bit. And then that way I can pull out all of the, um, you know, get basically point my wine into a corner. So that way I can, you know, get get all the, the good wine out as opposed to leaving any uh, behind. There's actually two type, different sizes of hose. I'm using a 3 8 inch hose, which is your standard. The other hose is a half inch in diameter. Now with the half inch, it would have drained this probably within about three to four minutes as to probably the 10 to 12 minutes it's going to take us you know, to transfer the um, six gallons of wine. This is actually a, an Italian Barola that we made from a Grand Cru kit. 
know, that we carry at Barley and Vine. The kit itself came with um, some oak chips, and so the oak chips, you can probably see that in there. I have a muslin bag that I put the chips in. Now, the reason I have that in a muslin bag is that that way the, the wine can, you know, circulate around the chips and draw out the goodness from the chips and permeate the rest of the wine. And also, when it comes time to racking like I'm doing right now, if the chips were all floating around, it would basically clog up my siphon equipment and it would make this a real, <laughs> it'd make it a real chore as opposed to, hey, this is fun. You know, go down um, to the cellar, 15 minutes later, you've racked it, you've tagged it, you've cleaned your, your fermenters, and you're ready to go on to the next thing. So we're getting real close to the edge, and what you want to do is you want to keep an eye on the back section, you know, basically your high end, and you'll start seeing the yeast actually, you know, come up out of the, uh, basically as you're drawing down the liquid, is that you'll see the yeast uh, sediment, you know, on the bottom of the fermenter. So it's important to keep an eye on that and monitor that, you know, as you continue siphoning or racking your wine from the, um, you know, the existing fermenter into the new clean fermenter. This is also known as bulk storage. So when you hear, oh, you know, I'm bulk storing my wine, that bulk storing is basically in your fermenter, and um, you know, I guess after you bottled it, is now not so much in the bulk. So the very last thing that you want to do is that you've got your um, your airlock that might have some of the um, sulfide, you know, from the last, you know, like the last fermentation. It was a really a good idea is to go ahead and, and to refresh it with just just a little bit more of the sulfite solution, and so that way it won't be running out. Of course, you know, you want to use a an airlock as opposed to cheesecloth or anything else like that. Because what this does is this lets you sanitize, you know, any air that's going in or coming out, and it also keeps, you know, things like the wild yeast and any possible um, maybe fruit flies, you know, from getting into your wine. If you'll notice that I have the, the headspace, and the headspace, you know, if you look at this, is the difference between the, um, if you would, you know, the top and then where you actually have the, the you know, your, your, the surface area of your liquid. When I put the airlock on, you know, I still have about an inch or so. Now the reason it's important to leave about an inch or so is that when it starts getting warmer outside, this is going to expand. And when it does, it'll come up through your, your airlock. So, you know, that's something to bear in mind. But after that's done, you know, I've made my notes. I went ahead and put this back on. And um, that concludes our demonstration of using the um, auto siphon and then also racking the wine and, um, you know, basically getting it off the old yeast and, and off the, um, the dregs. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, give us a call at Barley and Vine at 770-507-5998. And this is Dan Ballish. Have a great day.